Since the 991 initial arrival, its handsomely realized cabin has become a familiar one. Thus, the turbo's panoramic instrument cluster, elevated center console and tightly corralled switchgear all chime perfectly with our expectations of a contemporary 911. The one major change which came with the facelift of the 911 is the more button-heavy steering wheel, including being able to adjust the dynamics via a dial attached to the wheel. As standard the turbo comes with plenty of equipment, including Porsche's sports chrono pack, LED headlights, LED ambient interior lighting, automatic lights and wipers, dual zone climate control, electrically adjustable sports seats, parking sensors, a reversing camera, and Porsche's communication management infotainment system complete with sat-nav, Bluetooth, smartphone integration and a 7.0 in touchscreen display. Upgrade to the Turbo S, and not only do you get 572 bhp to play with, but also ceramic brake discs, dynamic chassis control, adaptive LED headlights and 18-way electrically adjustable sports seats. Arguably this works better aboard the 991 than in previous generations, not because the trim is significantly more plush but because the underlying architecture is fundamentally more agreeable. Because of this, the turbo, in standard or S form, remains, ergonomically and spiritually, as devoted to the business of driving as the car or a dot if you find the new model too unadorned to justify a near doubling of its price tag. We'd be more likely to recommend an alternative maker of sports cars than side with the criticism. Producing unfeasibly large numbers in unreasonably brief passages of time is largely the 911 Turbo's reason for being. Predictably, the range topping 991 Turbo S does this better than any generation that preceded it. From a standing start, it will hustle to 170 miles per hour within a mile. If no deviation is required, the car will cover 1 km in 20 seconds. It is, without question, extraordinarily fast. Such pace affords the Turbo S comparison with some of the quickest cars we've tested. Porsche will delight in the fact that, beneath 60 miles per hour, our timing gear shows the S variant to be marginally swifter than a Ferrari F12, before the latter's vast power overrides the former's traction advantage. At the core of those tiny fractions lies the flat 6's ability to churn through its PDK gearbox's lower ratios with practically no let up, combined with the cleverness and potency of its AWD enabled launch control function. To hold the Turbo S on its huge carbon ceramic discs and then release it to catapult, there is no other word for it, forward in a venomous spin cycle of tires turbines, crank and incredulousness, is to experience the Turbo S at its most expressive. Even here, though, the drama is doing rather than feeling. A split second in front of the F12 off the market may be, but where the Ferrari is a tumult of V12, the 911 lets fly with a flat, dissonant growl not much dramatized by either its extended 7200 revolutions per minute redline or standard fit sound symposer. Thus the Turbo S for all its big-winged swagger, is a button-down projectile more adept at providing effortless access to high speeds than showily involving you in it. In any gear save its long seventh, it is dismissively ballistic. Not only is it 3.9 seconds quicker from 30 to 70 miles per hour in fourth than the car are attested, but it's also almost 1.5 seconds swifter than the previous GT3 RS, itself a monster. The standard turbo model, despite a deficit of around 39 bhp and 29 pounds foot, delivers similarly impressive performance. It is slightly slower from 0 to 62 miles per hour, but it's still devastatingly quick and utterly effortless. Out on the road, and if you manage to overlook the Turbo S's 200 revolutions per minute higher redline, many would struggle to differentiate between the two. The 911 Turbo's reputation is one of giant killer. On performance alone, that reputation is still thoroughly deserved, as our figures show. But on price, it's more questionable. The full house Turbo S costs more than a Bentley Continental GTW12, more than an Aston Martin V12 Vantage S, and more than the most expensive Audi R8. The mid engine Ferraris and McLarens that it's capable of out accelerating are still priced five figures further into the stratosphere. 
but the idea of paying £145,000 for a series production 911 is one you could struggle to get your head around, especially given that the car will inevitably depreciate faster than some other machinery at that price. The spec is at least generous, especially in Turbo S form. Then there is the much admired usability to augment the ownership experience, almost 400 liters of cargo space, those occasional back seats, and, rather remarkably, better than 30 miles per gallon at a steady cruise, as our touring test result shows. If you're seriously considering a 911 Turbo, opting for GT Silver Paint is a wise choice natural leather seats ditto dot you could rapidly save the best part of 20,000 pounds by going for the standard turbo instead of the turbo s2 but it's a tad slower and if this is the 911 that appeals that's likely to matter